What's good, people? Uncle Hotep back at it again. I don't even know what's going on here. There's a lot to unpack. Is your spin class too young, too thin, and too white? Oh, Lord have mercy. Jessamine Stanley. This is her doing a yoga pose. Is a yoga teacher and author who's outspoken about the lack of diversity in studio culture. She says messaging is a large part of where studios fail prospective students. After a few committed months of hot yoga at a studio in New York, Christina Rice had it found her niche. So when the studio opened it was that it was offering teacher training, she signed right up. It was only then she when she arrived with her mat that she noticed something striking. There were 54 other women and men in the 10-week course, and not one of them looked like her. She was the lone African-American in the class. I did bond with some of the other students, said Rice, but I did feel very isolated at times. There were no teachers of color. I didn't have another woman who looked like me, who understood my struggles, my insecurities. You're supposed to be teaching, learning how to teach this class. This is, isn't this what this is for? She found her niche after a, fuck, a couple hot months, a couple months of hot yoga. They offer teacher training. She signed up. Like you, you should be secure with yourself. If you want to be a teacher trainer, training yoga. What are you insecure about? How old is this woman? <laughs> See, this is what I try. <laughs> you know, I've been in a few spin classes a lot. Um, not too many. I don't think I did a couple of yoga. But, you know, spin class, there was a couple brothers and sisters in there. There wasn't too many sisters. There might, no, there might, was, there might have been one regular. But there was a couple dudes that came in there and got busy. You know, um, was it less than a percentage in America? I mean, I don't know. I don't, it, was, it was probably a little less. But this Nogs aren't interested in in, in 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 spin class and hot yoga. That's what it is. If their culture uh, was geared toward that, what you're seeing here is not uh, they're underrepresented. It's just you are like maybe are breaking the mold. You know what I mean? It's up to you to message them and tell you, hey, go back to people you know and say, hey. Why don't you just do this hot yoga with me? I've, I've had a couple people do the spin class with me, my homies, before we got married. That's how it was supposed to roll. <laughs> now they go on the, now this, the, this these boutiques are, are the answer to the soulless gyms, you know, the LA fitnesses, you know what I mean? You know, they're, they're changing the gym genre. Now it's going to be all like, um, Crossfits and yoga classes and spin classes, you know I me mean? that type of time. But some people have begun to begun to question the stark differences between the studios in the neighborhood YMCA, like the prices in Washington. A single fifty-minute Barry's boot boot camp class is thirty-four dollars. Spinning Studios flywheel charge is 30. Solid core a Pilates like workout can run as much as 37 or about half the, the cost of a monthly membership in the most urban gyms. <laughs> they're raping them out there. <laughs> like there's no way in hell you one single class should be like $34. I mean, they're trying to keep a, a certain clientele in there and that's what it is. And they can do that just with pricing. You know, this is where you come in. I'm like, hey, if they're getting away with $34, man, you know, you could get away with like $10, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and do it that way. Like, oh my goodness. And like Rice, other fitness junkies have begun to notice who isn't coming. Sweat through a class in one of these studios and it's very possible that you'll see it. Too many lithe young white bodies and very few people of color or older or heavier exercisers. So what? If they can go to the Y, what's, what, what do you, what do you, I don't get this.
Letitia Long has regularly attended classes such as Orange Theory and Soul Cycle because she owns Wired Cycling, a studio offering cycling and TRX in DC. Her daughter, she says, loves berries. But Long, who is African-American and Hispanic, is struck by what she sees there. What is their messaging saying about aging? What is fit? What is beauty? I look at everything from the signage to the marketing materials. All she sees is millennials. How open and inclusive is that? Millennials can have their, their spin class, Letitia. Just like um, blacks can have their spin class or Spanish can people can have their spin class. Like everything has doesn't have to be open and inclusive. Like I don't I don't get this with this. Why do y'all all want to with the fit in with everything? I thought people want to stand out. You want everybody to be inclusive. No shine. This stop stop. Y'all just so mad that you want to rub elbows with these people all the time. And when you don't see it, you think you're losing out on life. That's fine. You know other culture complains about this except the American shine. The Nog, the Akata. They're the only ones I see complaining about this stuff. Every time. There hasn't been a time in our collective history where people have been as integrated as they are now. Jessamine Stanley, a North Carolina-based yoga teacher and author. Yeah, pick a class, any class. Is this really everybody or just everybody that can afford to go? Hey man, if you don't got the, you don't got the bread, that's just so be it. So be it. You know what I mean? Why? You, I, I don't. I, I just don't get it. This is prime. This is America. If you think there's like, there would be more blacks or people of color, if you will, going to these classes if they were affordable, then hey, that would say, hello, light bulb going top my head. You know what I'm saying? Get on the gram. <laughs> Start making your uh, spin class trendy. And offer a lower price, lower membership. And they should come. You should make a billion, million, a billion bucks. <laughs> what's, that, what's that song? I feel like a million bucks. <laughs> but I mean, are you serious with this? My goodness. Daniel Litcher, a college, Cornell University sociology professor and demographer. I mean, imagine going to school and learning that, man. <laughs> anyway, agrees the cities are more integrated, but he sees this rise of boutique businesses such as juice bars and studios with their Pacific clientele as a trend in keeping with larger demographic shifts. We've seen this return of the middle, white middle class minority professionals and professional immigrants. There's more money in the city now there's now a large enough clientele they can cater to and specialize in. That's it. You know, some company here is uh, make sure the writers give a range of genders, race, backgrounds, and personalities to identify with. You know, what I... Uh, I used to go to spin class at LA Fitness and, you know, there was a, you know, it was, I had like, there was two, three women, there was one older white guy, there was one black dude who, 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 uh, who, uh, came in, but it was, it's it about as diverse as America, I mean, like, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous that this, this article is being read. But Stanley, who has gained some fame with her criticism of boutique workout and the yoga's lack of the yoga culture's lack of diversity, describes the studio she has visited outside the big city bubble as anything but diverse. She tackles the subject in her book Everybody Yoga. The issue, she says, extends beyond race. She's often the only fat woman in the room, as well. She says, and if you're looking for a mature crowd, you have to keep looking too. But the health clubs association's reckoning. The average age of the studio exercisers is 30. 
The message says Stanley is essentially you're allowed in the space if you're white, slender, able body, and less than 45, cisgender, and heterosexual. <laughs> and if you're not, then you're not welcome. Stanley, I, I just think you're broke. <laughs> you can't afford it. Um, it's pricey to me. I wouldn't pay that. But hey, that doesn't stop you from uh, doing finding some other studio and that you can afford and, and training there. I, I don't get this. You know what I mean? This seems like a shakedown. So one guy makes a break point. His research in the workout habits revealed people want to be around others who are like them. That's almost universal. Unless you want to be around the shines. <laughs> Being the only person of color or fat person, she says, is feeling of utmost loneliness. You can determine to ignore it or you can try to find a way to simulate into it. That's enough for a lot of people to not even go. Now, see, this is, if you ask me, I've been in, in, in the only black person in any, a lot of those spin glasses, I didn't care. You know, this is, this is where these millennial blacks, you know, like this Stanley woman, you know, they want to be accepted. They want to be friends with white folks because white folks, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know why. <laughs> they want to be friends with the, anybody. You know, it's one thing you grew up with somebody, you've been friends with your own life, you know, but they just want to be friends with everybody. They want white folks to like them. And and when they see they think there's not any uh, blacks intermingling with them, they have a conniption fit. You know, stop me. <laughs> this is so fake, man. This is so fake. Like, how are you not, you, you, how are you a black person? You're so unsure of yourself. That if you're the only black person in a stu in, a, in a spin cycle, in a, in, a, in a spinning class, you feel uh, lonely. Lonely for what? <laughs> you're in there to exercise, not make friends. <laughs> you was a sucker. <laughs> I can't even believe this. Rice completed her training and began teaching yoga. Yoga. Before long, she began to notice that black women, both friends and strangers, were asking about classes. Now here, she started Om Noir, focusing on wellness for women of color. Last year in Long, Washington has taken plans to ensure their classes don't feel as exclusive as others. She charges about $15 for a spin class. That's way too much for me. <laughs> and uh, hires people of color to work in her studio. That's all you have to do. I mean, this it's not even it's not even that serious. You know, if if you feel there there's a a niche not being filled, then that's up to you. You that's a perfect business opportunity. I'm reading the comments, and you know the, the best part of these articles of the comments. Um, salute to Salt Lake Tribune for actually having their comment section up. You know that's a rarity in today's age. Or maybe these boutique classes just don't seem like the way people outside of the demographic white, young, white collar with the time and money to attend want to spend that time and money. Most hobbies are have a demographic. They group together because they enjoy the activity. So what? Instead, may, might we wonder why all these white skinny people want to hang out and ride bicycles that go nowhere together? <laughs> yes, blame whitey and people who are healthy, athletic, keep a good diet and thin America. Planet Fitness caters to people who are older and fat. <laughs> Jesus.
this is insanity. It's insanity. You know, um, you know, I, I don't know who's, they'll say the Trump era is responsible, I think, but this, this response, this is the response to the Trump era. It's not like he's responsible for it. Y'all just in your feelings about wanting to be America, <laughs> wanting to fit in instead of being comfortable with yourself. You know, I never felt like I was lonely because I was the only black person there. I, I didn't care. I didn't. I never even thought about it that way. Use most of the time. I was just in there from a workout. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't care if there's other people look like me in the in this in the spin class. If there is, I'm like, yo, what's up, brother? Good work, and, and keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? That's about it. Y'all just, just cornballs with this stuff, man. Anyway, this is Uncle Hotep. Please subscribe, please donate, Patreon, PayPal, whatever you can do. I greatly appreciate it. I'll talk to y'all later. Good night. No, it's not good night. It's, I'm, I'm still watching the snow. It's still, it's still, uh, it's going to snow all, all night. For y'all, all y'all that's in this snowstorm, be safe. Peace.